What's going on? Matt with Z01 Add-ons, and today we're going to show you how to install our Cybertruck cyber hooks. Let's get to it. Tesla Cybertruck tow hooks. They don't look all that great, but we have created a brand new billet aluminum design that is rated for 10 plus tons on a static pole. We'll get your truck on a flatbed if you need it. If you're going off-roading, need to get out of a sticky situation, these will work for you. Uh, as you know, your truck may have come with the black option here they bolt in both sides our setup is a direct replacement now please keep in mind this is first run batch finalize the design now we're showing you how to install them it's not a quick install so we'll include some steps we have the tools over here actually mikey if you want to highlight exactly what tools we're going to need um, but basically our setup is going to be bolting right into factory placements and we'll show you how uh, to remove your current factory hook, which is bolted in a different way from how our tow hook's gonna be uh, installed. So the nice thing is, is you're gonna unbolt the factory hooks, the complicated ones, and then these will install very easily after the fact. So tool-wise. Yeah, we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. You can either have it on an impact driver like this or on a ratchet. Um, you're also gonna need a 15 millimeter bottom wrench. Uh, these are just for tight spaces, unbolting the tow hook, the factory one from the sides or you can use a 15 millimeter on a ratchet set up like this. You'll need a panel push cl uh, clip removal tool. Or you can use a flat head screwdriver as well. Correct. And then also too, uh, depending on the side axis on the tow hooks, I also have a 15 millimeter with the swivel socket. So it's just a couple different variants of tools you can use uh, depending on which direction you want to take them off from. And then to install the new tow hook, uh, we have a stubby, pivoting 3 8 ratchet with a one inch socket on here it looks like looks so, like it's a, you got a 12 point there but yeah a 12 point but uh this i mean you can mount the new tow hook in any way this one just seems to be the easiest for us it fits in between here we can really get some good leverage and uh yeah one inch let's show you how to get the old tow hook off there's two hidden doors across the front end of your truck uh, you're going to pop those out with the finishing tool or flathead screwdriver. That's going to get you access to the bolts that are in there. You're going to go ahead and undo those bolts. Are those the 10 mils? Yep. There will be 10 across these backs as well. Or this one's push uh, 10, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter here, here, here. Then you have two push pins, one right, one right there, and then one on this side. And then also you're going to have two 10 millimeters behind uh, your factory. It would be like a tow hook cover door. Covers. Yeah, there's 10 millimeters up there. These little covers, actually. So you'll pop these out. These just snap into place. They slide over the factory. You'll pull these out. And it is rubberized towards the center, so it kind of like grips around that tow hook. Now, if you want to continue running these, you will have to trim the outside edge. Now, um, our, the gentleman who's letting us use his cyber truck for the design and fitment of these asked that we didn't trim his covers. So we're leaving these as is, but if you do want to run these and put them in place with our setup, you only have to trim this around here. Let me lay it down because it's going to be harder, easier to show you. So this opening here just needs to be trimmed out. So our D ring will slide through. So you'll get pretty close to the edge on this side, up and over, and same on this. You can leave the centerpiece exactly how it is. It's kind of a flexible rubber material, so it will slide over, but you will have to trim these if you wanna keep these in place. So now that you removed all eight of those 10 millimeter bolts running on this backside and these hidden doors, and also up top, there's also those two push pins we discussed earlier that will free up this belly pan. But next off, you have to go to each fender well. There's actually push pins running across right here. One, two, and then there's gonna be a third one and then a fourth up here. You definitely wanna remove all of those with your push pin tool on both sides, and that should free up this belly pen to be dropped. Hold. So you're pretty much just gonna unsnap this. You're gonna pull it towards the front of the vehicle. Just has some retainers in here, just like that. So here's yep. those little clips that you're basically pulling out, pulling it up and out. Yep. So this uh, gains access to the two inward facing bolts that are actually bolting in this way. And then the outside ones, you'll be able to access from that fender well that we 
we uh, removed those push clips from. I'll show you how to remove those bolts now. So now that we're getting in to the actual removal of the factory setup here, Mikey, if you can shine the light in there, you can see the two bolts right here. So you can get a wrench or your open socket or however you're gonna undo these bolts through this opening here, or you can pull this down to get your hand up in there to those bolts. These are probably the most complicated ones to get to. Um, and it's really not even that bad because once you you can clearly see the bolts right there and get your tool in there to remove them So Mikey is opting for the open box end on a wrench Getting these bolts loose is going to take a little bit of muscle But again once you get them going and get them loose past the thread loctite that they put on them from factory you'll be able to Thread them the rest of the way out by hand. So it's just the initial breaking of the bolts and then pulling it out by hand. And I should note, if you don't have a life, like obviously we have the truck on a lift for the purpose of this video. We actually completely removed the factory side on this laying on the ground in a parking lot. So you can do it in front of your house without a lift or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, if, if you don't have a ratcheting tool, which for some reason we don't have one here, um, it takes a little bit longer. We detach the body trim clips to pull the fender back and you can see the two bolt well my big old arm let's see can you bring the camera back the other way there you go our light so the bolts are just right here so you're going to remove those two bolts and that will loosen up the tow hook the ring should just slide right that. out and the benefit is is we're not using those bolts to install our setup so you can set those all to the side and button everything back up uh, that we took out. We're gonna make sure these ones slot right back into these channels right here, because if not, you're gonna have a hard time putting everything back in. So those clips. So that. I think it's a good pressure. Push it in, it all snaps in, bolts back together. So our tow hook is gonna come with the hardware already installed on the actual ring itself. Keep in mind that this bolt setup is a left hand thread so when you start threading it in you're going to want to go left hand instead of right hand and it's going right into the horn of the i guess you would call it the frame of the truck left hand see I already <laughs> that up. it's it's weird it goes against all conventional knowledge when it's a left hand bolt i'm gonna come on this side You're gonna fill it tighten up. Straighten it up. Yeah, make sure you get it nice and straight. Wipe your handprints off when you're done. <laughs> it's gonna want to twist. There you go. And there you have it. So our heavy duty billet aluminum D-ring is going to stick out a little bit further than the factory setup. We think it looks a little bit better in that design. If you want to get the natural, you can even see the machining even through the red anodizing here. We're going to be playing around with colors, so check out the site on what you're looking for. Um, again, the machine option or the paintable option is a great way to go if you want to color match your truck or any other way. but. Uh, great replacement, great upgrade, and 100% functional.